Let's continue with chapter 12, where we're going to do the sequential search. Um, in this chapter, we're going to be doing searching. In the next chapter, which I will probably cover tomorrow, I'm going to be starting off on talking about sorting things. So what we want to do is we want to search through an array and find out where a certain object is. Um, the book uses a deck of cards. I'm going to use something a bit different here. I'm going to use a list of countries. And you'll notice that they are in no particular order. And here I have a um, program where I say, give a country name. I do this repeatedly. And until you press the enter key, I'm going to find out where it is in the list. Or if it's not in the list, I'm going to tell you that as well. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to say we're going to have an integer called found at, which is where something was found. And that's going to be the result of calling the sequential search method and giving it the array that we want, which is going to be our country's array, and then the target that we want. And the target that we want, I'm sorry, I'm getting things mixed up here. We're going to give it the array that we want, and then we're going to give it the user's desired choice. If the found at position is equal to negative one, then we're going to say, let's do printf is not in the list, which will be the user choice. Otherwise, we'll say is found at index percent D. And that's going to be the user choice and the position where it was found. And that means we now have to write a method to do the sequential search. It's going to return an integer and the name again is going to be called sequential search. We'll have a string array and we'll call it items. And then we will also have a string, which is the target that we're looking for. Let's document this so that we know what it does. Okay. So given an array of items and a target to look for, return the index at which the target was found or negative one if not found. And I think I'm going to copy this from the book here so that we can save a bit of time here. And the way they do it is an interesting one. I may rewrite it in a different way as well. Let me go here. Oop. Paste that in and beautify. and copy it in here. Oh, they called it search, but I'm gonna call it sequential search. So what we're going to do here is items.length, and if items.i equals target, we'll return that index, otherwise return negative one. And let's compile that and let's run it. So for example, if we say Tuvalu, it's at index zero. Uh, let's give a country name like um, Albania. Albania was at index number 19. 19, 20, well, do we want to count them? Sure. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Yes, Albania is number 19. Unfortunately, you couldn't see me pointing my finger at the screen, but trust me, I counted it correctly. And let's see if it'll find the last one correctly also. Run again here. So if I say Kenya is the last one, good. Now let's try one that's not in the list, like Germany. And it's not in the list because it gave us back a negative one. 
So there's our sequential search. Essentially, it starts at the first item and keeps going through them until it finds the one that we have. If it's not found, it returns a negative one. Now, I'm going to say something here, and this is um, something that's going to come up a lot if you take Computer Science 76. But I'm going to give you sort of a preview of what it is. And there's something is, how do we figure out how efficient an algorithm is? And we use something called big O notation. The O stands for on the order of. For a sequential search, on the average, you need to go through half of the entries to find the um, target. Sometimes you'll find it right away. Sometimes you'll have to go all the way to the end. But over the long run, you have to go through about half of the items. And the number of comparisons you have to do is proportional to the number of items in the list. So a sequential search through a list of 1,000 items will take about 10 times as long, again, over the average, as a search through a list of 100 items. Okay. And we say that the sequential search is an order n algorithm. So when I say big O and an n in parentheses, that means proportional to the number of items. And again, we're going to see big O notation coming over and over and over again in computer science 76. So now you've heard about it. OK, there's our sequential search. Um, I was going to say there's another way to write this. I may come back to that later if I have some extra time to do that. The thing that's bugging me a little bit is I've got two return statements here. And there's this school of thought that says a method should have one entry point and only one exit point. And the more exit points you have from a method, that's more points of failure for things to go wrong. There is a way to do this so you have only one return statement, but it does not look as elegant as this. So I'm going to leave this one for now, the way the book has it, and I might come back to it later. Okay, when we have things that are not in order, we really don't have any big improvement over the sequential search. We have to start at the beginning and go all the way to the end, and either we're going to find the, the thing we're looking for or we aren't. However, if the number of countries were in order, as they are here, where I have Albania through Zimbabwe, then I can take advantage of something called the binary search. And here's how that works. Let's just go with a few countries here. Let's say I have Albania. Well, I'm just going to use the letters. It'll be a lot easier. So let's say A, C, F, H, K, M. O and Q, R and Z. Uh, let's go to T and Z, there we go. Now these are in order. The way I can look for it is I can go and start it's going to take me a couple of seconds to move myself to where I'm at. So let's say I'm looking for the letter R. I'm going to go to the middle element. Okay, R is bigger than M. I'm counting on the fact that everything is in order. The fact that I have M here, R is bigger than M. That means that all of the ones before M 
are no longer in the competition. I can ignore all of them. So I've immediately gotten rid of half of the half of the things I need to look for. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up a little bit to O because the M is not the one I'm looking for either. And now I'm going to go and look at what's in the middle of these. And it turns out that R happens to be in the middle of that group there. And I found it. But let's say I was looking for T. So let's just keep going on this. Since T is bigger than R, that means I can get rid of this half. So I... mm -hmm. So when the items are in order, I can go to the midpoint. Okay. If the thing I'm looking for is before the midpoint, then everything from the midpoint onwards is no longer in the competition. If it's after the midpoint, then everything before the, before and the midpoint is out of the running. Each time I do a comparison, I eliminate half the possible choices. Either I eventually find the item I'm looking for, or if we have this, let's call this the start and the end, or the start and end points meet, which means I haven't found the item. This algorithm is proportional to the log to the base two of the number of items. So for let's say 1,024 items, which is two to the 10th, it will take at most 10 comparisons to find the um, item or find that it's not there. If I have, let's say, four times as many, 4,096 items, which is two to the 14th, it will take at most 14 comparisons. If I have, let's say, 32,768 items, that's going to be two to the, um, oh, what is that going to be here? I'll be able to think here. To the 15th. Uh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I, I screwed up on this. Excuse me. This is to the 12th. Pardon me. So this is really quite nice. If I have the things already in order, then the more items I have, I still don't have a huge number of comparisons to do. Whereas here, 32,768, if I were doing a sequential search, on the average, I'd have to go through 16,000 of them. Whereas for 4,096, I'd have to go only through 2,000 of them on the average. And so it turns out that the binary search is order of log to n. But again, it requires that the elements are sorted into order already. And why is it called a binary search? I guess it's called binary because you lose half the items every time you um, do a comparison. Okay, so let's go and do this. Um, let's come back here. And in this case,
let's use our same code here. But this time we're going to call it binary search. And I guess I'd better get my indentation correct here. There we go. Now what I need to do is I need to write my binary search method. It's going to also return an integer. And we're going to give it, what was the name? What were the names I used here? An items and a target, perfect. And again, I'm going to go to the book and use what they have there. And change a few things here. And let's go back here. Oh, oops, better, better, better prettify it, prettify it. I think we can get rid of that and that. Mm. That's going to be items.length. So as long as the low and high pointers, the low is going to start at zero. The high is going to be at the end of our array. And as long as they don't cross over each other. So I better change my notes here. Um, or start at endpoints, exchange places, which means I haven't found the item. I'll find the midpoint. Then I'm going to compare. Uh, excuse me. There's something. Something's very weird here. Oh dearie me! It appears that copy and paste. Copy and paste is not my friend because it looks like things have gotten out into the wrong order. Yuck. Okay, I'm going to have to clean this up here. And let's see what they had here. And then we have a return minus one out there. Okay. Okay, this is much better. So while the low is less than or equal to the high point, I go to the middle. I compare the item at the middle to my target. If it's equal to zero, then I must have found it. I can return the midpoint. Otherwise, if the, the comparison comes out less than zero, that means that this item is less than the target. And that means I can get rid of everything below. The low becomes mid plus one. Otherwise, the high point moves down to the middle and I get rid of the upper half of my array for my search. And let's compile that. Let's see if I copied everything properly here. So if I say here, um, Albania, was it index zero? Zimbabwe should be at the end. Check to see that it finds that correctly. And let's say we have... Um, Denmark, was it index three? Let's check to make sure that's correct. Zero, one, two, three, good. And let's try again looking for Germany. And Germany is not in the list. Now, the book says, okay, let's do some, um, 
debugging output so we can see what's happening here. And in fact, I'm going to put in some extra output so we can see what's really going on. Let's print out the midpoint. And then we're going to say system.out.printf compare to percent %s gives percent %d. And we're comparing items submit to target, which gave us comp. Here for zero. In fact, let's do this. So we can see the low, high, and midpoint. Compile that. And then here, what we're going to do is so now let's look, for example, for um. Kenya. So the midpoint of zero on 23 is 11. I'm comparing Latvia, which is at the middle, to Kenya. Latvia is bigger than Kenya, which means I'm now going to get rid of everything from Latvia to the end, and now I'm going to go from zero to 10. The midpoint is five. France is less than Kenya. And so I go from 6 through 10. Middle is 8. Comparing India to Kenya gives a negative 2, which means I get um, rid of some of that. Compare Japan to Kenya. And finally, it turns out that this one was almost right in the middle. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 um, five comparisons that I have to do. Let's run this again, and let's look at this. And let's say I have something like, um, come on. And here it was found in index six. Again, I had to go through one, two, three, four different um, comparisons to make it work. If I have something like Germany, let's see what the kind of gets here. And you'll notice that everything keeps going until the low and high cross over each other and Germany is not in the list. Um, what might be easier to do here is, and you can do this on your own. I'm not going to do it here during our uh, session today. Let me see if I can find this. Um, online Java um, debugger. I don't remember where it was here. It's definitely not that. Ah, this one. Thank you. The online Java compiler. There we go. That was this one here. Uh, scroll down to compile and run your code. Okay. So this thing might, I don't know if this is going to work. Let's, let's, let's give it a shot and see what happens. Okay. that in there and this time i'm going to get rid of the scanner because i'm not sure how to make the input work and for now we're just going to say string user choice let's do something like uh, india and then we're going to have found out as negative one and we're going to get rid of our while loop altogether that makes things a little bit easier 
And let's see if this. Um, I have no idea what happened there. Oh, we have an error. Scroll down to see the error. Oh, dearie me, I must have gotten rid of something that I shouldn't have. There we go. Let's try that. This matches that, and this matches that. Perfect. Okay. Oh, dearie me. Sorry about this. Okay, and then we can go through this and take a look. And so we go to this one. So here we get our list of countries. And oh, let's see. User choices India. Now we come in here. We set the um yeah, close that. Low is zero, high is 23. Our midpoint is 11. And we do the comparison. Print that out. Comparison is less than zero, so watch what happens with low and high. The high becomes the midpoint minus one, and then we come back to here. Low is still less than high, and now we're looking at zero through 10. And so you can trace it through that way. So you might want to use a visualizer. Again, I'm not going to go through this all the way. That may be another way for you to see it happening in action. And that's all I want to do for chapter 12. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to do chapter 13, where I'm going to talk a little bit about objects of arrays, which is where here we had arrays of objects. I had an array of strings. What we're going to be doing in the next chapter is we're going to have an object that contains arrays inside of it. And we're also going to learn how to sort an array. And that's it for today.